So recently I put a post on Instagram with regards to grips. Uh, the post consisted of quite a few pictures and it got a lot of engagement and a lot of feedback. So I thought I'd put those pictures into a, a video format and speak over them to give you a bit more explanation um, as to how you find certain grips on the racket. So whether you're a coach looking to uh, kind of brush up on your, your grips or whether you're a player looking to change a grip or if you've been told by your coach that you should maybe move your grip around slightly, this video should help you to find the correct grips. So first of all, uh, every tennis racket has a grip and every grip has eight bevels. So looking at this image, you can see that it's an octagonal shape. Now, when you hold the racket frame side up, so as you can see here, the frame is perpendicular to the floor. The first bevel is the flat bevel that runs along in line with the frame. Bevel number two is the diagonal bevel that goes down to the right hand side of the racket. Bevel number three is the flat bevel on the side and so on. Now if you're a left-handed player this will go the other way around. So bevel number one will still remain at the top of the racket but bevel number two will be the diagonal on the left and number three will be the flat bevel on the side of the racket on the left hand side. So it's important just to remember bevel number one, two, three and four primarily. You may use some of the other ones on, on certain shots, but we're going to cover the first four. Once you know the numbers of the eight bevels, the next step is to know which parts of your hand should be touching those bevels. Now, as you can see, I've got a picture here of my right hand, and the two touch points that I've marked out are on the index finger knuckle pad and the heel pad of my hand. Now, obviously, for a left-handed player, this will just be on the other hand. It's important that you get both of these touch points onto the correct bevel. A very common club level mistake is when changing a grip, players get just their index finger knuckle pad on the right bevel and they don't really think about their heel pad. Now, when you hold the grip in that way, it can feel very uncomfortable and it can lead to players giving up on, on the grip change. So it's really important that you get both of those touch points in the right place to give you a much more comfortable feel when changing grips. With that in mind, we're gonna jump straight into the different grips. So the first grip we're going to look at is looking at resting our knuckle pad and heel pad on bevel number one. So this picture shows the eastern backhand grip. As we say, bevel number one. My knuckle is resting on the bevel that's in line with the frame. So you can see my racket here, again, is perpendicular to the floor. So my knuckle is on the top of the racket. And you can also see my heel pad is on that same bevel. Now, this grip is common with single-handed backhand players when hitting a drive or topspin backhand. The reason being, when you meet the ball out in front of you, your string should be flat or slightly on top of the ball with this grip. It will allow you to have a nice comfortable wrist position without having to turn and flick your wrist. The second grip we're going to look at on bevel number two is the continental grip, or some know it as the chopper grip. Again, you can see that I've got my racket here perpendicular to the floor. Now my knuckle has shifted around to the second bevel, so the diagonal slanted bevel on the right-hand side of my racket. I'm a right-handed player, so that's why I've gone to the right, but again, if you're a lefty, you'd go around to the left-hand side. This is quite a universal grip. It's used for a lot of shots, the serve in particular. It's used for volleys, overheads, slice backhands, double-handed backhands, and handsy shots and drop shots, so shots where you need to try and get out of trouble to give you nice touch and feel. The reason we use it for the serve is because it allows you to hit slice, flat, and topspin all with the same grip. With the volley, it allows you to hit your forehand volley and your backhand volley, again, without having to change. So obviously when we're at the net, we need quick reaction times. Changing grip isn't ideal. Um, slice backhand is good, it gives you a slightly open racket face when hitting with that single-handed backhand, but again, when you've got a double-handed backhand, you've got that spare hand on there as well to give you a bit more stability. Moving on to bevel number three now. So as you can see on this picture, this is called the Eastern Forehand Grip. Now, again, my racket is in the same position, but my knuckle has shifted around again to the right to be resting on the third bevel, the bevel that's flat along the side of the racket. So the bevel that's in line with the strings, effectively. 
Um, it's quite difficult to see where my heel pad is, but again, it is in that same bevel, bevel number three, ensuring that my knuckles are slanted at a diagonal. Now, anytime you get the, the two touch points right, you should see a slight spread in your fingers. Some coaches like to call it the trigger finger, where you have a gap between your index finger and your middle finger. That's a good position to be in. Now, the eastern forehand grip is commonly used on the forehand side, of course. Um, it's good for depth and power. It doesn't give you as much spin as some of the other grips that we're going to see in a, in a minute. Um, so it gives you a slightly lower margin for error. But it is uh, quite a traditional grip, and you do see lots of players on the tour using it. On to bevel four next. So on this picture, you can see that my racket is actually facing the floor now. Now, the reason I've done this is so that you can see my knuckle position. It has shifted around to the right again onto bevel number four, which is the one to the right of bevel number three that you saw before, the big flat bevel in line with the strings. Now, this grip is called the semi-western grip. It's used for the forehand. It helps with adding topspin to your shots, giving you higher net clearance and a good balance of power and control. Now this I would say is probably the most common forehand grip on the tour at the moment just because it allows you to get that extra spin uh, and extra consistency on the forehand when ripping it. And finally bevel number five. So this is the most extreme of the grips that we're going to look at today. Again my racket is parallel to the floor and my knuckle has moved around one more bevel to the right. Effectively if we were looking at the grip as we were originally, my knuckle would be right at the bottom of the grip, right underneath it. So um, as you can see, it's quite extreme. It can be used for the forehand. Um, some professional players do use it, not many anymore, um, but it gives you a lot of topspin. The downside of this grip, with it being so extreme, is you can't really generate much power and it's difficult to hit with depth. Okay, because you're getting so much top spin, that ball will, will end up dropping quite short. And it requires you to get a lot more racket head speed as well. So not as common, um, but it is used and it's good to understand um, that it's there. So there you go. Some of the main grips that you'll be using or some of the main grips that you see on the Pro Tour. There are a couple of other grips, uh, but we, we're not going to go into those today. I may make another video to go in slightly more detail um, with some of the grips that we've talked about. But hopefully that information will help you. Um, you know, go back to the course, have a practice. But like I said, make sure that you get your knuckle pad and your heel pad onto that same bevel. Good luck and let me know how you get on.